I'm often asked, why do I do a political show? Well, it has to be because of one of my favorite political quotes, the Gessner philosophy. Gessner philosophy. And it says, 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 the right leaders feel a sense of urgency in good times and bad, whether facing threat or opportunity. No matter what, they are obsessed, afflicted with a creative compulsion and inner drive for progress burning hot coals in the stomach that remains constant, whether facing threat or opportunity. This is what I also believe, that there's a sense of urgency that needs to be done with every right leader. And that is why I do the show. This I believe. I am very deep. I'm in it. Nothing breaks the news like the news. Trust me, I can prove it. I'm ready. Let's take on the biggest debates on radio, provide insights, experience, and build an unforgettable discussion together. I am Femi D. Amelie. Amelie. Welcome to the show today. Welcome. Yes, I do say that to you. My name is Femi Diamela. This is The Brief with Femi D Live. There's so much to cover today. All the news will meet in one place right now for you. I bring you all the stories as they matter and now they have changed and well, made a difference throughout the course of the week. Here I am right now. I've got all the stories that I can verify courtesy of the Nigeria Info News text at this time. So let's dig into it. What are the stories that really made the high points this week? Oh, I tell you, Edo politics was in the mix this week. Amazing time to look at what has happened from one party to another. Uh, that's the move Governor Basaki had to make eventually. But that's not even the dramatic point. Did anybody notice the number of the acting chairmen that the All Progressive Congress were able to come up with well, before the end of the week, alongside with the courts um, and the verdicts that were well, pretty much have been going out? Oh, yes. I'll, I'll make an attempt to cover that for you and let you in on exactly how we arrived at that point. And yes, let you know what the playmakers, wait, let me take that back, the newsmakers, what they did, how they did, and how we arrived in this very week of June, the big stories, and how they all meet here right now. Let's start off this moment now to cover some of those big stories for you. I start off in a moment. Stay with me right here, right now. A great talk show unravels your thinking, makes you stop to listen, engages you in a debate of opinions. I believe this man knows what he is doing. He is is a Nigerian. And ultimately brings you to the king of talk radio, Femi D. Live. Live. Time, big wig, big stories, all here, all now. Now, this week started off with uh, one major incident in the state villa. The presidency eventually did step out to explain this incident. Well, the senior special advisor to the president and media and publicity, Garba Shew, in a communique on Sunday, just this last Sunday, assured everyone that the president, Muhammadu Buhari, is not and was not at any time in any form of danger arising, either from the deadly infection or the reported incident by the security personnel, which he said is currently under investigation. Now, according to Shio, this particular incident happened outside the main residence of the president. He noted that the armed guards and other security personnel assigned to the state house received the necessary training of especially weapons handling, and when they come short, their relevant agencies have their rules and regulations to immediately address that. So, that was pretty much of the framework. But what I do hear now is that the Inspector General Police uh, did go on to attend to that very incident himself, asking a lot of the officers uh, well, to be interrogated, to find out the truth of the details, and well, if they had misused their power, and on whose authority they did use their power. So that, 
<laughs> and that's right, uh, it's amazing. Let's see whether that um, story would be made public eventually, if they would even want to let us know how that story goes on. But that was one incident that did kick off uh, Sunday evening, as it happened right here in the Federal Capital Territory. Now, also on Sunday, the famous Jabi uh, Lickmore was shot down. Yes, it was, uh, for pr- b- following the breaking of the rules and regulations and the policies regarding social gatherings um, as we would have it in Nigeria right now. The presidential tax force team have the mandate of the president. They do have the mandate of the president to say, hey, no social gathering, follow the FCTA guidelines on COVID-19 now. Everybody will be fine. But that was broken earlier this week when Naira Mali uh, held a concert in the premises of that uh, very lake mall. And yes, now conducting business in that area is really, really tough. I do hear some of those shopping malls in that very lake mall are now suing uh, that lake mall for pretty much, uh, well, breaking those guidelines and, of course, um, hindering their own business. That's the story on the sideline. But one man was in the front line to explain this all to Nigeria's Ikaro Ata, who is the chairman of the tax force team here in the FCT, uh, ministerial tax force team, explained the next set of moves. Listen to him right now. According to the wisdom of the magistrate, what you could see here is uh, a court order setting up Ajabi Lake Mall for a period of two weeks. It may be extended if the order of the court is not respected here. What the magistrate has ruled is that Jabi Lake Mall, the management actually defaulted in allowing its parking space to be used for a concert in contravention to the COVID-19 rules and regulations. All right, well, that's pretty much of his explanation regards to that. But this week started off a little bit different with the COVID-19 numbers, okay? So let me let you in on Sunday evening what those numbers were. Uh, And, of course, this week has also seen us record the highest number of confirmed cases, 745 cases in Nigeria just this week. Uh, As at yesterday, there were a new number of cases, but not as high as that um, number of cases as we had. But as on Monday morning, the numbers that were available, courtesy of the NCDC, were pretty much this. 403 new cases as a Monday morning of COVID-19 in the country. The total at that time was 16,085. Now, Gombe was on top of the chart with 73 new cases, while Lagos at 68 as at Monday morning. Uh, others, Kano at 46, Edo State at 36, FCT at 35, Nasara with just 31, Kaduna 17, um, and yes, Oyo State with 16, Abia recorded 15, Delta and Bono with 13 cases each, and in Plateau it was 8, Niger State and Rivers had 7 cases each, while the likes of Enugu Ogon had 6, and Kebig did come in with 3. That's how those numbers were as at Monday morning. But they, you know what the numbers are? They keep changing really quick and fast. And there are reasons to be concerned more than ever before. As the easing of the lockdown continues, one wonders, should we be doing this? Mm, what should we be doing? In fact, that's the way of putting it. Well, those were the numbers as at the start of this week. Let's go on now. The National Working Committee of the All Progressive Congress said they affirmed that the decision to uh, both the screening and the appeal committee for the Ado State governorship election, they have decided. But the national chairman, as at Monday of this week, was Adam Soshomale. He made known his decision with regards to the screening committee's um, findings um, uh, that disqualified Governor Godwin Obasaki, disqualified Chris Ogeme Wanyi. That will kill me right now for pronouncing this name. Uh, Matthew Idurinye Kweme. Fidel, pronounce it in your mind on my behalf. Okay, these are Edu names right now. I do, I really wish I knew how to pronounce them. But um, they will not be participating in the June 22 primaries. That was how Monday started off. And it was all about explaining why this was going to be so. I'm talking about, um, I don't know. Um, the controversy, the man found in the middle of the controversy as the uh, chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Soshomale, made an attempt, um, uh, well, to explain this um, uh, pretty much in his own way. A party member in the States, Kenneth uh, Asokweme, who is a deputy state chairman, explained their decision. Oh yeah, follow this because this lays the footwork 
of a lot of the things that we would follow through as the news goes on. The NWC has reviewed the two reports, the ground for disqualification and the grounds for qualification. And we are satisfied that the appeal committee did a thorough job and their job has actually enriched or further reinforced the findings of the screening committee. And accordingly, NWC unanimously approved of the report of the screening committee and the appeal committee. All right, that was Adam Zoshimela, the All Progressive Congress uh, man, chieftain. Let's go with chieftain. I don't want to be caught in the web of what is going on. Uh, even explaining this more, uh, one man was able to appeal to that National Working Committee with regards to its disqualification. Uh, well, they appealed with regards to that, but take a listen to what, uh, as at Monday, what the All Progressive Congress was saying. We, in the first place, had one of the individuals who appealed against the from there, we went on to review the cases of the other two individuals who are also disqualified. All right, well, that led from Abuja drama to a state drama now. That is to say, a faction of the All Progressive Congress in Edo State recommended the expulsion of Godwin Obasaki as the chairman of the party in the state. Well, what, what they just said this, uh, state women leader Dr. Ayososa Amadasun uh, from the party, they said Anselm Ojesua, uh, Dr. Ayososa Amadasun should all be kicked out of the party. But speaking at a news conference in Benin City, uh, David Imusia led committee commended this, the disqualification of Godwin Obaski by the party's governorship primary screening committee. Now, with all that said, um, this, this was how they explained why other people should leave the party or be kicked out of the party. This was a faction of the Ado State All Progressive Congress. Don't ask me which one. I'm trying to understand how this faction thing works these days. Godwin Obaseki and some other persons have gone to court in violation of Article 21, Subsection D5 of the APC Constitution, both in Abuja, in Bini, in Port Harcourt. They have shown for injunctions and rulings to circumvent the process of law and the provisions of our party constitution in defense of democratic norms. In light of this, the State Working Committee of the All Progressive Congress at those states have recommended to the National Working Committee, in addition to the decision they have already taken, should be expelled from the party for violating the provisions of our party constitution. All right, well, that pretty much puts the framework of that. But as a Monday evening, there was some breaking news regarding a senator, uh, Senator Bayo Oshinowo. He did die. That news was confirmed. That until his death, he was representing the Lagos East uh, in the Senate, yeah? In the Nigerian Senate, he was representing them until his death. He was also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Industry, and Investment. He was a four-time member of the Lagos State House of Assembly before proceeding to the Senate. Now, still with politics, the national chairman, as a Monday now, remember we're still talking Monday, of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Soshimale, did meet with the chief of staff to the president, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Yeah, uh, the meeting which took place in the office of the chief of staff also had in attendance um, the party's national vice northwest chairman, Inua Abdul Kadri, um, the national treasurer, Adamu Panda. Well, the meeting may be related to the party's disqualification, but that did go on on Monday with regards to... Uh, the all progressive congress and things that were going on in the party that was monday evening this week i i, I did say was full of drama so wait for it follow through because you need to sometimes understand uh what under the bridge is not only the thing that matters sometimes the bridge is just taken away it's a flood it's a disaster when you follow the news the way they do happen it happens really quick and fast okay Outside of politics, the National Association of Resident Doctors did embark on an indefinite strike on Monday. That was the 15th of June. That strike started over 12 noon. The association's president, Dr. Ali Sokomba, and at, while announcing this on Monday, said the union has taken a decision to go on strike as a result of failed series of meetings uh, that had not been held uh, to address their concerns. Now, let me share with you what he said as at Monday. I know there was a meeting that did take place subsequently, but then as at Monday, this was what the mood and the feeling he had with regards to why they should go on strike. Neck observed the insincerity of the appointees of the executive arm of government in paying the outstanding salary shortfall of 2014, 2015, 2016 under the guise of the so-called appeal of the National Industrial Court judgment. And at the end of the meeting, the Neck resolved to proceed 
on an indefinite nationwide strike with the exemption of our members attending to COVID-19 patients at designated COVID-19 treatment and isolation centers for the next two weeks. After which, if things remain the same, they shall also be co-opted to join the strike. Aha, so that was what led to the, uh, the National Association of Wrestling Doctors Strike. That was the president, by the way, speaking there. His name, Dr. Ali Sokom Umba. Okay, well, pretty much uh, in his way of explaining things. Now, the presidential tax force team uh, at the level of the federal level says they are worried. You and I and everybody involved were not complying with the directive with regards to COVID-19. In fact, they said there's an increasing level of um, non-compliance and even infection going on in the country. Uh, the chairman of that tax force team is the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. He explained it doesn't like what we are all up to and how we're going about it. Take a listen for yourself. In the course of our monitoring and surveillance of compliance across the nation, we have observed an escalation of the level of non-compliance with simple measures to keep social distancing, wearing of masks in public places, sanitation and hygiene. This is more prevalent in markets, motor parks, and some places of worship. Hmm. And then the Minister of Health also was concerned that all the related health challenges were not being attended to. Dr. Sage Ehanire spoke up on the same platform. We commemorated World Blood, World Blood Do Not Day yesterday, Sunday, and the theme of which was Safe Blood Saves Lives. That occasion was a clear reminder that despite COVID-19, other diseases and other problems still remain within our health system. Meanwhile, also this same week, uh, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, says 717 cases of sexual violence have been reported to the police between January and May. That's just five months now. IGP Adamu said that this and Monday, while briefing State House correspondents after a meeting with President Mohamed Dubuari, he explained that these cases need to be resolved and is even encouraging people who really need to report their cases to do so. I will call on every Nigerian that has or comes across any victim of sexual offenses of rape or gender-based violence to quickly report to law enforcement uh, agents because keeping it without reporting it will give um, room for the perpetrators to continue to commit the offenses. All right, well, that covers uh, what the Inspector General of Police uh, distress. Meanwhile, in San Francisco State this week as well, the vet of a medical practitioner was confirmed. Uh, he was a practitioner, by the way, at the Federal Medical Center in Guisau. His name, Dr. Enoch Okpara. Well, the body of late Okpara, who was a consultant in um, obstetrics and, gynecolo- and a gynecologist, by the way, was discovered at his residence, Marari, area of Guisau, on Saturday. Now, he was attacked. It was not COVID-19. He was attacked by uh, um, criminals now. Well, the Criminal Investigation Department of Zanfra Police Command launched an investigation into the matter to find out why the noble doctor was attacked. I wonder why that did happen. Okay, let's move away from that one now. Action Aid Nigeria, a non-government organization, has called on African leaders to join the voices in the fight against extrajudicial killings of black Americans in the United States. Here's the reason they give why Nigerians should join in in this very conversation. Take a listen. And so the issue of slavery, that is systematic racism, you know, racialized criminal justice system, racial violence, and particularly police, uh, police brutality, the campaign has had a resonance with ethnic and racial minority groups outside the U.S. as well. The intensity of the statement, Black Lives Matter, reverberates across the local locals outside the USA. You know, from the United Kingdom to Canada, you have Taiwan, you have a lot of people now raising their voices, a lot of both white and black and all minority groups. Mm. All right, well, that's one way of saying that was the country director NLB explaining uh, on behalf of Action Aid extrajudicial killings as we have them across the country. Okay, let's move on from there now. Let's venture into another day of interest. Uh, uh, well, this same week. Now, this week as well, there was another moment where the federal government suspended the operations of a, f- a private jet charter and aircraft maintenance firm, their name, Executive Jet Services. 
Well, a legal practitioner, Sheldra Akbako, says the relaxation of the ban on religious gatherings due to the COVID-19 pandemic is too soon. Um, let's go back to the executive jet partner. The Minister of Evasion, Adi Sirika, during the presidential tax force briefing in Abuja, explained what they were told and what was done. Okay, in this very interesting moment uh, that did play through. Take a listen. Now, to the president, oh, the minister of evasion, Adi Sirika, explain. The operation is a clear violation of our approval, to which we take very seriously. And uh, it seems that this is becoming a norm. Perhaps this is the second time. So, executive air services operations are hereby suspended indefinitely. We will also find them maximally according to the law. The captain of the flight will also be sanctioned for giving wrong information to the control tower and also appropriately in accordance with the law. Now, it seems also that people are not tired of trying our resolve. Well, we also are not tired of living and rising up to the challenge and living and rising of our own responsibility. Hmm. Okay, that was Minister of Evasion explaining our executive jets is now suspended in this service. So they, they are not tired of trying their resolve. So they will penalize them accordingly with regards to what they used to do. Now, Adam Sashemale was back in the news on that Tuesday reaffirming the decision of the All Progressive Congress. That was Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday is a faraway time when you think about it in the, in the world of news. Our party is not a party of big men. It is governed by rules. Both the small and the big are subjected to that rule. I'm sure you will agree that our president led by example when we conducted direct primaries in the last presidential election and we still went to the Eagle Square for affirmation. So if the president did not have the first right of refusal because her constitution did not provide for it, we cannot order any circumstances now bend the rules when it comes to some people and then change the rules when it comes to others. Mm. And then he said this about Obaseki. No, a diff- this is not the praise song. This is what he said about Obaseki this time. In the face of that law, we saw last week PDP conducted world congresses to elect their delegates that will go to the stadium. It start to reason. He's our governor. We have to. We are law abiding. We will. Uh, but if PDP can conduct activities across the 192 wards with the same law, I do not think that our own governor will discriminate against his own party. So we are hopeful that everything will be peaceful. Meanwhile. In Britain this week, uh, the British Prime Minister did speak about Black Lives Matter. Take a listen. I just had to sneak this one in. I think what we want to do is learn now very fast what fresh changes we need to make. What I feel most strongly is that there are so many positive stories that are so far that are not being heard. And things really are changing. And you're seeing young black kids now doing better in some of the most difficult subjects in school than they were ever before. You're seeing more going to top universities. We need to start telling that story and building up a culture of high expectations, of a narrative about success as well as stamping out the racism and the discrimination that unquestionably exists. Okay, so this week as well, the other state tax force team, on, as a Tuesday, said, uh, on Monday rather, said that it had relaxed the coffee in postal states following the advent of the ravaging coronavirus pandemic. But the tax force we made the decision public after a two and a half hour meeting presided by Chairman Governor Shea Makide added that the coffee would now run from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. A statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Taiwo Adisa, confirmed that all the decisions, which include the resumption of classes for private Number six, GSS three, SS three students from Monday. That's from June 29. Well, resumption of work by all categories of workers at the state secretariat from June 22. Opening up of mosques and churches, uh, which are to operate the 25 percent uh, capacity, um, uh, was supposed to take place, and that means the not more than 25 percent. But as of this morning. I do hear they have rescinded that decision, uh, reconsidering it, having met with the um, operators of churches and mosques in Ohio State. They're really rethinking about opening that up yet again. So somewhere between go, don't go, change your mind, don't change your mind. This is what coronavirus is doing um, in the midst of all this drama, as one would find uh, this time. Now... Here, let's go to this one. Um, the world did mark this week World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Yes, something like that exists if we do not know. Where people who are elderly in this society are abused by, well, younger ones, um, either through maltreatment, you no know, funding, and the likes of that. But speaking up about this this week um, was quite interesting. Take a listen to what uh, uh, Professor Ola Akogun 
Yes, um, the executive director of an elderly care foundation shared with regards to that very day that happened this week. An elderly person crossing the street. They can't cross the street. Just if you look through the window in your office, you ask yourself, is it friendly to the elderly? No. When they build a house and they put a, a walkway there, it's for somebody, an elderly person, to be able to use a walker to move around there and take a walk. Yet, the streets are not friendly to them. Not friendly to them. Okay. Uh, uh, forgive me. There's going to be plenty of those stated the brief today. This is the brief with Family Life. I've got you covered for all these stories as they did build up one after the other throughout the course of this week. Now, here's another one. Edo State Politics. Now, the governor there, Godwin Obaseki, did resign from the All Progressive Congress this week. Let me not say too much. Let me allow you to listen to that moment he made that choice uh, to go in a new direction with his political career. Or you may even say this way, his political life. I'm just here to inform you that I have now decided formally to resign my membership of the All Progressive Congress. Having done that, I will now announce in the next few days my specific line of action and what platform I will be contesting the gubernatorial elections on. I'm sure the whole country knows and is aware of what has gone on with me and the party chairman, the party leadership, which culminated in my disqualification as a gubernatorial aspirant. And upon that unfortunate decision by the chairman of the All Progressive Congress. All right, that, that was uh, State Governor Godwin Obaseki leaving the All Progressive Congress to a destination he later announced in the week. But uh, he didn't leave alone. His Deputy Governor Philip Schwab also followed through, carefully following the steps of his principal. It is with great pain that I am leaving the All Progressive Congress APC that I help and labor to build as a result of the recklessness and absolute lawlessness of Comrade Adams Ali Oshomole, the suspended APC National Chairman. I also stand with the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obateki. Anywhere he's taking the political ambition to, I, Comrade Philip Chabu, will follow him. He's not alone. A few more people are joining the moving ship out of the APC. Hmm. I do hope you will really follow through when it's time for you to follow through uh, through the difficult times and the glorious times. I just hope, uh, well, Philip Schreiber, who is the uh, deputy governor at this time, that was him speaking up there. Now, moving past all that as well, the, um, the Minister of Labour and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, insisted that the meeting he had with the resident doctors was very successful, even though um, Dr. Aliu Soko Mba um, thinks otherwise. That was a dramatic point this week. Now, trying to stay, lay stay, and keep things going the way they should, Minister of Health, Dr. Enani Riyasage, described the fact that they are committed to protecting the lives of citizens. The resident doctors have told us that they are not going to be coming to work very soon until setting other conditions are met. We have had obligation as the Minister of Health to be ready to protect the lives of Nigeria. We are not going to allow our hospitals to be fallow and our patients to be abandoned. The Ministry of Health will issue a directive to all medical directors and chief medical directors of all federal hospitals and health institutions in the country to open up a register and record all those who come to work and all those who do not come to work will be noted down. That was the Minister of Health. That was his own directive in response to national resident doctors and uh, the Minister of Labour as they continue to determine what direction they want to go. All right, well, determine, um, determine, determine, determine. Oh, now we'll see which of them works best in this situation. Now, also, I, I find it interesting because President Muhammad Dubari says, seed up or seed out or ship out. That's what he told the security chiefs pretty much uh, this week as he called them to order with regarding the worsening security situation in the country. Not pleasing at all. Not pleasing at all. Uh, speaking about this, the National Security Advisor did explain uh, with regards to the new directive of the president. Take a listen for yourself what he said. Mr. President has expressed great concern over the declining security situation in the country. He is extremely unhappy about what is happening and he feels that even though the security agencies are doing their best, their best is not good enough for him and he wants an immediate reversal of the current trend 
an immediate reversal of our misfortunes in all their dimensions. All right, well, that was uh, retired Major Babagana Monguno uh, speaking up with regards to that. So, interventions, directive, behave yourself um, with regards to this. Okay, more of that. Domestic flights, should they come back soon enough? Maybe, maybe not. But the Minister of Aviation was speaking uh, this week with regards to how things should go in days to come. But it looks like, no, that would not be happening. The flights will not be resuming anytime soon, at least not on record. Take a listen to what uh, Adi Sirika, who is the Minister of Aviation, explained just this week at a June 21st, um, that saying June 21st is not for simple days to resume domestic operations for flights. We never said aviation is going to start definitely on the 21st. We are supposed to put a report back. Based on what we have, we have some work to do. As such, June 21st is not a feasible date to resume operations domestic. The Civil Aviation Authority, despite all pressures coming from all quarters, will not approve the start of operations any date until we are sure and we confirm that we are ready to start in a safe, secure, organized and efficient manner. All right, well, that covers that with regards to aviation. Now, uh, of interest as well, resident doctors back in the, in the loop of things. Um, uh, what can I say? There was more to it. Now, the Minister of State for Labor, that's Festa Schiamo, was trying to explain what is the latest with regards to uh, doctor strike or no strike and, um, well, the views of labor essentially about this? Finance ministries were just able to start the payment on that same Monday 15th. And by the meeting of 16th, they had come with evidence that they have paid for 11 three hospitals and the federal medical centers. And we showed them the evidence. Also, there was evidence that the insurance premium had been paid. In fact, $9 billion had been spent by the federal government to pay for insurance for not only health workers this time, but every worker in the public service of the Federation. Apart from the health workers, any other worker who loses his life as a result of the COVID, the family can make claims for the group life insurance as a shrine in the PECOM Act. As of now, we are still talking to them. We are satisfied that the government side, led by the, the direct employer, the Minister of Health, has done the needful. So it's our hope that they will summon the relevant organs of their association so that they can call on the strike, which brought some hiccups in the health system management. All right, well, that pretty much says a lot about how things are. Uh, that was Dr. Chris Ngigi, by the way. Okay, and we'll see how all this frames up. And, well, it, the speech there, uh, let me see. Dr. Chris Ngigi, uh, accompanied by the Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Naniwe, uh, also Minister of Labor and Employment, uh, First Scam, all there, all of them just pretty much uh, addressing State House correspondent this week. But there was also another interesting moment uh, with regards to the strike action. Take a listen to this. We hope that there's a solution in sight. What we have done is to brief His Excellency the President, who, as we all do, has the final responsibility for everything that goes on in government. Those of us who are ministers and ministries and have to report to him periodically. In this particular case, it has been important because of the uh, strike action of resident doctors to report to him how things have been. All right, well, that's interesting to know. Keep up with me now. Uh, if you can, throughout the course of the week at Family Live, you can send some of the podcast stories that are of interest to you. We just may be able to review them come Saturday on the Brief with Family Live. Okay, much of that. Let's keep up now. Remember, Money Crossfire runs with me alongside with Swad on Monday through Friday. Yeah, well, I'm here uh, explaining the politics and also discussing it out with you. Well, from there... Godwin Obaseki made one major announcement this week following his, his decision to leave your Progressive Congress. Listen to it. I want to assure all of you that I am prepared to provide leadership that will not only PDP in office in the new states, but as the ruling party in the new states, who will make sure that the level of progress, the level of growth, and the level of participation in the political system by our people is on in this country.
right, that was uh, Godwin Obasaki. The moment he declared that he has joined the People's Democratic Party as a politician and possibly will be the governorship aspirant for that very political party at this time. Remember, he is one hot man. He is hot enough uh, to lead uh, the United States uh, um, no, team and the campaign against the All Progressive Congress that he would possibly be facing off with uh, Pastor Izehiyamu. We'll see how that turns out at the end of the day. Now, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanku Muhammad, has formally sworn in the Justice Monika Dongban Mensem as the President of Court of Appeal. Certainly, you will see that there is no one court in this country that has the number of justices that the Court of Appeal has. Therefore, that shows you that Court of Appeal is a home of work. Court of Appeal is the home of cooperation. You have to cooperate together, all of you, from top to bottom, so that the work will continue to progress. Just to let you know, the father of the new Court of Appeal president was also a, call, a retired Appeal Court of Justice as well. So uh, she's from Plata State. Um, well, pretty much interesting career, uh, you know, work that's gone on and on um, for now. Okay, so where am I now? Let's see what other stories am I missing out on. Let's see whether you can take on this one. I, I need to open up the phone lines before it's 11 o'clock so we can have a conversation about this. Uh, Okay, so there's been talk about Niger State as well, um, finding a lasting solution um, with regards to Niger State. Um, there's been issues of insecurity in Niger State, in Bono State, um, in Katsina State. All this make up some of the big stories um, that Wombi Adjorda uh, laid the framework uh, with regards to how things should be done. But security continues to remain a challenge. So also is the issue of rape in the country. Well, Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talem, voiced the commitment um, of the federal government in the fight against cases of rape uh, and gender violence, gender-based violence in the country. She was really at it this week and she explained what the government will be doing. Take a listen to our thoughts with regards to this. The president has also directed his uh, attorney general to put in place an interministerial committee where we can together work to ensure that we get to the root of this matter. And there are so many system issues that we must focus on. The Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, the Police, the Ministry of Police Affairs, with the Inspector General of Police, Judiciary, all hands are on deck. Mm. All hands are on deck. And as uh, the PTFC says, human resistance to change is one of the biggest causes of the, the spread of the pandemic. But um, if I were just going to use one single word, we are stubborn. Like the rest of the world, our national response continues to face challenges, especially as there is no known cure for the virus presently. This includes inadequate infrastructure, manpower shortage, global shortage of essential items like test kits and PPEs, strain on the economy, which has compelled the need to balance between lives and livelihoods. By far, the greatest challenge are human resistance to change, stigmatization, mental health, skepticism, culture, religious belief, rising incidences of domestic violence, and a host of others. Well, and a host of others, we'll see how that turns out. M- meanwhile, the national coordinator of the tax force, Dr. Sunny Aliu, also shared his own thoughts about what we're doing right and wrong at this time. The PTF continues to be very concerned about um, the issue of uh, compliance. As you are aware, we are here to push for the containment of COVID-19 in the country through data-driven medical advisories. Um, the fact that um, we are receiving many reports on the flouting of the guidelines by by individuals, groups, and organizations is simply uh, unacceptable. All right, well, that covers that uh, with regards to that very story. Let me also share with you one more moment uh, that was fascinating this week, yeah? Uh, and yes, worthy of some response as well. It's it's just numbers, numbers and issues going on uh, with regards to what one would confidently find at this time. Oh, should I? Oh, no, I'm out of time. Let me let, me let this be. I go on a break now. After the break, I'll let you into the conversation. Uh, you tell me some of the big stories this week that framed your mindset with regards to what's going on in the news. I'd like to hear from you. Keep up with me on the very following platforms I will be announcing in a short time from now. This is The Brief with Femme Live.